Hello there. I'm Vic Veer, and I'm an ENT consultant at the Royal National ENT Hospital in London. Thank you very much for watching this video, and it's about explaining all the different ways that tonsils can be removed. Removing tonsils is one of the most common operations performed in the UK. There are many different ways of removing tonsils, but they all have their own pros and cons. This video will explain the different ways of removing these tonsils so you can make a proper decision of which type of operation you would like to be performed. So to start off with, this is a simple diagram of the back of the throat. Firstly, you can see the uvula, which is the dangly thing right in the middle at the top, and below it is the tongue. The two red structures on either side are the tonsils. Tonsils seem largest between the ages of about two to seven, but by puberty, they start shrinking down. By adulthood, most tonsils can't easily be seen. Here you can see that in actual fact, tonsils are often much larger than they might seem when looking into the mouth. They are quite firmly stuck to the side of the throat. The tonsils sit in a hammock between two folds of tissue, which we surgeons call the anterior and posterior tonsil pillars, as you can see here in blue. Here you can see just one of the tonsils, but this time it is a side view, so you can see its attachment to the side of the throat. This black line represents the lining of the throat, and quite deep to that are some of the muscles in the throat which help you to swallow things. In between the lining of the throat and the muscles of the throat, there are lots of blood vessels and lots of nerves. Both of these are very important with regard to this operation. The most common way of removing tonsils is known as a cold steel tonsillectomy. This is basically just cutting the tonsils out with either scissors, a knife or some other sharp instruments. It is called cold steel because the tissue is not cauterized as the tonsils are removed. The tonsils are carefully dissected out of the tonsil bed until it can be completely removed. In simple cases, both tonsils can be removed within five minutes or so. During this operation, you do have to be quite careful not to accidentally damage the underlying structures, such as the blood vessels of nerves, or for obvious reasons. One of the problems with the cold steel method is that the nerves and the blood vessels are often quite exposed after the operation, and there can therefore be quite a lot of pain afterwards. One way around this problem is not to remove all of the tonsil, but to leave a thin sliver of tonsil overlying the tonsil bed and therefore protecting the sensitive blood vessels and nerves. This type of operation is called an intracapsular tonsillectomy. This means that the dissection continues inside the tonsil rather than outside the tonsil, like in the cold steel method. One way of performing an intracapsular tonsillectomy is known as the coblation technique. Another method is called the laser technique, which uses a carbon dioxide laser. Because some of the tonsil is left behind covering the nerves, these techniques seem to show less pain for the first day or so after the operation. As one might expect, the more tissue that is left behind, the less pain there is. The one main problem with these methods, however, is that the tonsil remnant may grow back. About 1 in 20 patients with these methods have a regrowth of the tonsils to the point where they really should be removed again. Another option, which I personally like, is to dissect within the capsule or the surface coating of the tonsil. That way the whole tonsil is still removed, but a thin layer is still covering the sensitive nerves and vessels underneath. Uh, this technique, however, is quite difficult to do and it isn't always possible, but when it works, it works very well. Another interesting technique is to shrink the tonsil rather than remove it. Using a technique known as radiofrequency ablation, the tonsil can be gently cauterized in different locations throughout the gland. This causes almost no pain or bleeding afterwards, as the whole tonsil is still intact and therefore there is no interference with the underlying sensitive nerves or blood vessels. This technique is so gentle it can be done under local anaesthetic, 
so you don't have to go to sleep to have it done. In fact, you can have it done in the clinic and then walk away straight afterwards. After a few weeks, the tonsils have shrunk to a fraction of their normal size and no longer block the airway. This option is great for snorers or people with sleep apnea who don't want the risks of a proper full general operation. So I hope you found that video useful and informative. And if you'd like any further information, please do not hesitate to contact me.